Hey y'all, Savannah Bell here with My Massage World, and we're going to demo how this new financial and business management system spreadsheet works. I'm going to show you both Excel and Google Sheets. I wanted it available for both of those um, so that whichever one you prefer, you can use. So we've got a lot to cover. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, let's look at Microsoft Excel first. When you first open this file, it's going to pop up this screen here that's going to ask you whether you want to disable or enable macros. You are going to need to enable those macros or this, fun this spreadsheet will not function correctly. All of these buttons within the spreadsheet, both these change currency buttons, all of the submit buttons that you'll see in different areas, like here in your sales sheet, all of these require those macros to be able to, to work. So you need to have that enabled. Now, if for some reason it is still telling you that it's disabling the macros, regardless of what you click there, because sometimes that happens. If your security features in Microsoft are really um, strong, so to speak, it's gonna require an extra step. So if you go up to, in on a Mac, you'll go up here to this Excel section and you'll hit preferences. On a PC, I believe you go under file and it's under um, uh, properties. So we'll go to security and then it's just a second. You go to security and you're gonna click enable all macros. Now on Google, it's a little bit different. It will open just fine, but when you go to submit anything, so if I go to click this button here, it's going to pop up an alert. So when it says authorization required, a script attached to this document needs your permission to run. You will only have to do this the first time you press a button. You do not have to do this every time. I promise I would not have made it in Google if you did. <laughs> um, so you're gonna click continue and it's gonna ask you to log in or to choose the account that you want to log in with. And then it's gonna say Google hasn't verified this app. Okay, you can click back to safety if you don't wanna use a spreadsheet, but in order to use the spreadsheet, you need to click advanced and you come down here and it's going to say, go to financial and business management system script unsafe. Because essentially you're opening another file, so to speak, and that is the script file. That's all the coding on the back end. So we'll click that. And it wants access to your Google account and you allow. And that's essentially so that your account can see and use all of this stuff. We allow. And there you go. Now everything will function as it's supposed to. Now, one more thing before we jump into how this works, because so I don't forget. If for some reason you scroll over here and you don't see a submit button here or anywhere else in any of these other forms, like in here, if you don't see this button right here, then go up to your history and clear your history, your cache, and your cookies. That is, for whatever reason, Google has an issue with those and it just won't display it. Um, so once you clear your cache, it will display and it will all function just fine. Okay, it is time to get into all the meat and potatoes of how this functions and what you can do with it. So first, let's do an overview, um, and then we'll go in page by page and see how this works and, and how you use it. So you'll see you have your today's date is always going to be here at the top, and then you will also have um, a menu here that you can choose from. So your monthly sheets are spelled out. You have a dashboard. You have space for your gift cards, packages profit and loss statement, um, a client's section, and then a space for you to enter and update the info relative, relevant to your business. Um, so here's how, how your menu is laid out. This is in Google Sheets. In Excel, you're gonna see that you actually, on the monthly part, you actually have a drop down um, to do those. When you select a month, so let's say I wanna choose February, I'm gonna then have to go in and click February, and now it will take me to my February sheet okay the rest of these will function with just one click all right now in your google sheets version you're going to see that you have these laid out here what's going to happen is it's going to highlight when you hover over that and then you have to click the blue link and that will take you to the appropriate sheet all right same thing with the dashboard you click that all right so general overview of how this is laid out you have your dashboard here with some stats that you'll be able to look at, kind of the breakdown over a year, quarterly, monthly breakdowns sort of thing. You have your monthly sheets, which you're going to see you have a calendar. You can click this link up here and jump to our sales section for January. 
and this will have all kinds of data for you to look at and a way to keep track of all of your sales. And again, we'll break these down individually. You have your expenses section, same kind of setup. Your travel log, if you are a mobile therapist, this will help a lot. And then you have your marketing plan. Um, and in this section, you can keep track of what you want to do and exactly all of the info related to your marketing in different segments. So again, we'll go through each one of these individually. Let's go back over. And so that's every monthly sheet is pretty much the same, but that way you can go look individually in months and see how, um, see how you're doing. So let's go again, to, you've got your dashboard. Let's go to gift cards next. And this is your gift card entry. So it's got another little form up here where we'll enter information. And then you can track the gift card usage in here. Um, so it gives you a lot of info about that. And your packages are pretty much the same kind of setup if you sell packages. Um, and then we'll go to your profit and loss statement. So you can look at having a quarterly, um, excuse me, monthly, quarterly, or annual profit and loss to be able to see your breakdown of all of this. Then you have your clients section. So this um, here will have a form where you can enter all your information for each client. This ha has the whole database and you can come in here and update things, but it will also track all kinds of information around each client, as well as give you a list of you know, upcoming birthdays, who needs check-ins, that sort of thing. Um, so we'll get to all that in just a minute. For now, let's come to this update info section. And this is where we're going to start. This is where you're going to start before you do anything else in the spreadsheet, because this is what feeds into the rest of the spreadsheet. So let's get into this. I'm gonna zoom in a good bit so that we can see how this works. So up here in the top section, we're gonna start putting in our payment types accepted. So do you accept cash, check, card, Venmo, insurance, whatever. You can change the text in any of these boxes to suit the types of payment that you accept. If there is any sort of percentage charged or charge per use, you would put that in here. So for like a card, I may put 2.9% is charged every time I swipe a card. And then there's also a 30 cent charge per use. So this is gonna help me calculate those credit card fees um, and how much I'm paying in total in credit card fees per month, per year sort of thing. So I can keep track of that. Down here, you're going to enter when your uh, gift cards expire. So how many months after purchase does it expire? I'm in Tennessee, so we have a two year requirement. So 24 months after purchase, gift cards would expire. Packages, I can set, um, it's a prepaid service, not a gift card is a little bit different. So I'm gonna put 12 months they have to use their packages. And what this is gonna do is in those gift card and package sheets, it's gonna calculate that for you of when their expiration date is based on this. And then this is a part, as apparently a whole lot of people were very excited about and I didn't realize it until I, I launched this, um, but a distribution of revenue. So when you have um, any money coming into your business, you need to decide how it's gonna be spent. So your distribution of revenue is going to allow you to kind of break that down. This is a typical setup that I've already entered it here for you, but you can change this to suit how you run your business and how you uh, split up your money. So general concept is usually business profit, owner's compensation, taxes, operating expenses, and savings. That, that's probably the most common breakdown for how we're gonna split up the revenue that's coming into your business. 10% is the business profit, 25% is your compensation. Um, there's a difference there, the business needs to make its own profit and then you need to be paid. So that's where we're getting this, this split here. 30% to taxes, roughly 30% uh, to operating expenses, and then 5% to savings because your business does need to have its own savings. Um, so this is kind of a standard breakdown. Again, you can adjust these percentages to be whatever you want. Um, make sure they equal 100%, <laughs> uh, but, but that will give you the distribution of revenue. And what that does is it feeds into monthly and yearly how much you should be seeing in your account, in your, your savings account, because 5% of that revenue should have been put there. How much you should be seeing in your taxes account, because 30% should be put there, that sort of thing. So you can keep track of that distribution of revenue. So that's what that's for. Now we'll come up here to expense categories. 
And again, I have a whole bunch of examples in here of kind of your standard stuff. Um, but then there's some extra spaces here if you have any extras or you can change these to be whatever you want. You can, if it's not rent, if it's you know, mortgage, then you would just change this to, to display mortgage. Um, and all of this feeds into your expense area in your spreadsheets so that whenever you go to click and categorize things, you can just click the button, select that specific category, and then it's going to keep track of all of your stuff in your profit and loss statements and in your expense reports sort of thing. Same thing with your marketing avenues. Um, I put in some samples here and then a bunch of extra spaces if you want those um, for how you market. And so when you go to put in clients, it will keep track of all of your different marketing avenues. Now you've got a limit here. So if you're doing a ton of different events, I don't necessarily recommend doing each event right here, but if you want to say events and then you can specify which ones later, but if you only do a handful of events, maybe that's where you put them here. Then client status. And this is how do you want to label your clients? So when you go to put in clients in that section, you can label them. And this could be something like, you know, they're VIP clients. So you've got a special program for them, or they're just a good client, or there's some kind of concern maybe, or it's a red flag client like mm, really don't want to work with them ever again, or they're terminated. You've made the effort to actually fire that client. Um, and of course you can have extra, you can change these red flag. I would keep because that is one specific section in your client, um, segment that you will have a list of red flag clients when they are marked specifically with red flag. Then your expense accounts, so you may have like general checking, tax account, your operating expense account, whatever other accounts you may be paying expenses out of, that's here. And again, when you go to input your expenses, this will feed into that to allow you to select. And then you're going to have your initial follow-up, check-in, and re-engage. So how many days since their last visit do you want to follow up with people? If it's two days after last visit, you want to send a quick follow-up email or a check-in sort of thing to you know, see how they're doing and remind them of any stretches that you've told them to do, whatever. You set that here. You can change this to be one day. You can change it to be seven days. It doesn't matter. Check-in, same thing. So you might kind of like that mid-range. It's been a week, two weeks. They've not booked another appointment. We want to check in with them if they've not been in again. And then a re-engagement is they've not been in. They've not really been kind of interacting with the business at all. We need to re-engage in some way, whether that's email, sending a special, whatever it may be. Now, when you come down here to services and more, this is where we're going to be putting in all of your services, the price associated with that service, the service hours, and the tax rate. And you're going to see you have primary services, you have add-ons, so those things if you have a bunch of add-ons like hot stone, gua sha, whatever, um, you can put it in there. Products, gift cards, packages, rent, and classes. So I wanted to give you the option because I know a whole lot of you are making money in very different ways. You may use one single line. You offer one massage and that's it. That's perfectly fine. Okay, you can still use this. Um, you're still going to input it here. It's going to make life easier. If you use all of these, that's perfectly fine too. Because I know there's a whole lot of people who rent out space, plus teach a couple classes, whether that's CE classes or workshops to the public, whatever that may be. They offer a bunch of products. They have gift cards, packages, memberships, all that fun stuff. Memberships can also, uh, I know a lot of people will track memberships in packages um, in the same kind of way. So you can do that here. It kind of functions in a similar way as there's a service count um, and the fee associated with it. And then they can just keep track of those within your packages tab. So I'm just going to input a whole bunch of sample data so you can see how this works. Now I'm going to stop right here because I want to give you a sample of something like in these add-ons. So you've got hot stone at $15. Now for service hours, you can track extra or not. That is totally up to you for things like this. Whether you want your service hours to be uh, relevant to all of the time, the hands-on time that you spend per client. So hot stones, obviously you've got the setup, you've got the, the breakdown and the washing and, and all the things um, before and after your client. So it's not service time is in session time, but it's still 
an additional hands-on time for that particular type of service. So if you want to do that, then you could put your service hours here. If you want service hours to be representative of the time that you have your hands on a client, then we could just leave this blank. So that's up to you. Again, same thing with something like a sauna. Do you want to track that as service hours or not? Because it's not hands-on time, they're sitting in a sauna. So it's up to you whether you want to include these as service hours or not. That really is just personal preference. And if you don't want all of these extras to be on your list, you can absolutely come through here and delete them all, okay? Just highlight what you don't want and delete so that they're not all on your list, okay? And again, a little trick. If you've got, let's say, a whole lot of products or a whole lot of services or add-ons or whatever, and you have to charge a tax on those, it's probably gonna be the same tax rate for all of them. Um, and if that's the case, an easy way to do that, let's say that this whole thing is filled up with products, is to put it in once at 9.75%, and then you grab this when you see that little cross, and you just drag it down, and then, ooh, looky there. You don't have to type 9.75% in, you know, 30 times. Um, it's all right there. Okay, now we've got some services in here. We've got some add-ons, we've got products, we've got some gift cards, we've got packages, rent, and classes. Um, so I've got a few of everything in here. So let me zoom in here again, just to show you. So we've got some relaxation and deep tissue. I'm sticking like very basic sort of stuff here. Um, your fee, again, your service hours that are in here so that it can track how many service hours you're doing per month. Um, and then yearly, and your tax rate would go in here if you need to tax those services. Same thing with add-ons, it's the exact same setup. Products, same thing, doing your product name, the fee, and the tax rate. Gift cards, we're going to put these in. This could be service specific or just amounts, so that's up to you. And if you want any sort of description related to those, again, your fee and tax rate. Packages, we put in our name. So this is telling me I've got six 60 minute relaxation massages in this package. So that'd be 550 bucks. No, we don't have to tax those. And then the service count. So that's six of those. Um, same thing with our 12, we put 12 in our service count. And that's gonna help with our package tracking here in a little bit when we look at it. Then rent, we're gonna put our renter in there, any details that we need to have. Um, and the amount and again your tax rate and same thing with your classes All right, so now that all of this information is in here we are going to See how all of this works. So that's the first part of setting this up is just getting that information in now It's pretty much ready to use. So let's go to clients first And we're going to input a few clients here real quick just to show you how this functions so you can see all of these boxes are empty with everything. You've got a table down here. So how this is gonna work, once we start inputting data, you're gonna see who has the most visits, who has the highest average spend, who spent the most overall, and your top acquisition method, because we're gonna be marking how we found that client or how that client found us, rather. <clears throat> you're gonna have a list of any clients that you mark red flag. Remember me saying that you need to keep the word red flag or the words red flag in there um, in your client status and that's because we want to be sure that we've got that list there of red flag clients um this is going to automatically calculate any upcoming birthdays and then based on again how many days that you marked until people need initial follow-up they need that check-in or they need re-engagement that's going to put those names here as well so i'm going to enter in some clients real quick um, and some sample data, and then we'll see how this functions. So you're gonna see, you're gonna put in the client name, the acquisition method, and again, you have that drop down to pick from that is based on what we just entered in. If you want any acquisition details, who they were referred by or whatever as it relates to that acquisition, like if you mark event, you would mark which event or you would type in which event it was. You put in their birth date and their address, phone number, email, and then you can mark their status again. Which ones do you want in here? And then you've got goals and notes. And this is something you can go back and change later, so don't worry. Um, this is just add initial visit. What are we doing here? Then when you click submit, it will say running script and finish script. And then it's done and it clears out your data. The one big one of the big differences between Google Sheets and Excel is that in Excel, when we go to that, 
you will see you have a submit button and a clear button at each point. That's because you need to hit submit. That will change, that will move your data down. And then you'll have to hit clear to clear out all of this data here. Okay. And in Google Sheets, it's automatic. It does the submission and the clearing. So now you will see that we have, once you've submitted it, all that information has kind of moved down here. And you'll see down here in this tab, you have all that information that you just put input, but you'll also see some blank spaces for number of visits, total spend, average spend, first session date, last session date, and then your feedback quotes and testimonials. So this will automatically calculate. When we start putting this into, like when we go to our monthly sheets and you actually enter in some sales, when this client's name pops up, it will keep track of how many visits they've had. It will keep track of how much they have spent with you over the year. It will keep track of their average spend per session. When was their first session date and when was their last session date? And then you can come in here and you can put in any feedback, quotes, that they give you testimonials, anything that you may want to use for marketing or something like that. You just got a little space here for some extra. And yes, you can come in here and change the info. Let's say their phone number changes or whatever. You can come in here and just change that. Do not mess with these though. These you'll see up here, big long formulas going on. Yeah, leave those alone or it's going to mess up your formula and it won't work. So that is basically, and you'll see you now have your top acquisition method up here, word of mouth, because we have one person in there with word of mouth. You'll see that his birthday is upcoming in just two days, and it's got his information. So if you want to send a card or something like that, or send a text or a call or whatever, you have that information there. And then these will start to fill in as we fill in our sales data with these clients. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to put in a bunch of clients so that we can see how this works. Okay, so you'll see we have all the clients here and they're now in this table and you can come in and you can add any quotes or feedback, you can add any notes, you can change their goals, you can change the phone number, whatever else you need. This is just some sample data. And then once we start putting sales in, this stuff will start to fill in as well. Some of these other blank visits because right now we don't have any data on these clients we just have their information and you'll see here that we've got some clients that have been marked as red flag and therefore they're going to show in this little list here all right so that's your, your clients tab pretty straightforward once you get those entered they're going to feed into a drop down list in your sales sheet so that you can just pick from those clients it's not absolutely necessary that you use this by any means um, but if you want to use this client management kind of system there you go all right, so let's jump into our sales sheet. So let's jump over here to January. And we're gonna look at how everything works in these monthly sheets. So you have a calendar and you will notice that if you choose to use this year after year, you can come in and you can change the year and the dates will change with it. All right, right now we're in 2023, so we're gonna keep that. So you have, let's do an overview first and then we'll go into the specifics you have your calendar here you have your sales you can jump to in this little menu here to make it a little easier to navigate with lots of information for you you have your expenses your travel log and then your marketing plan so every month is the same kind of setup to make it easy for you. Let's go one by one here. So in your calendar, again, you can use this or not. It does not matter. This is where you can keep track of appointments. If you have a separate calendar, then don't worry about this. But this is just one place that if you would like, it's available to you. So you could mark your time um, and then your client and you'll see that those have been fed in here. And then you can mark your services. Okay, you can have even space for two add-ons if you would like. So pretty straightforward. All of these are the same. You've got enough for, for several appointments each day. Now this marketing section, you don't want to type anything in here. That is going to be fed over from your marketing plan in the other section. This will automatically add. When you add a date on that marketing plan, it will automatically add it to your calendar. That way you can just do everything in one space for your marketing and it just transfers here. So that's, that's the basics of your calendar and it's pretty straightforward and simple. Um, and so we will go ahead and jump over to your sales section. And by the way, you can just scroll like side to side. That's like 
super easy too if you want to navigate that way. All right, so this is where we get into a lot more information. <laughs> so you can, you're gonna have a form here to enter in your sales. And again, they will transfer into this table down here. You do not want to mess with any of the things here because there's a whole lot of hidden formulas within this. You've got a whole lot of hidden columns and things that are calculating stuff for you. So don't mess with this table. Just enter in information here, click submit, let it do all the things for you, all right? So we're gonna enter in a few sales and then you're gonna see how this adjusts. So we're gonna put our client in, our date, our client type. You're gonna use your, or excuse me, you're gonna put in the sales type and then the description. So if I click primary services, then here all my primary services have been chosen. If I choose an add-on, then all of my add-ons are going to show. If I choose a product that they buy at checkout, then I will see those products. So you've got three different sales types that can be included in one sale. And then we're gonna mark our payment type. And again, this is what you put in that enter info section. So let's say I want to do a card. And this is gonna give me my total already. It calculates in the tax rate and all of those things for that one particular product with no tax on these others. You can put in a discount. This is just numerical. And let's say he left a $20 tip. And again, that will adjust the total here. We hit submit, it runs that script, adds everything, clears it out, and now you'll see some data pop up. So this goes into your tab, it calculates all kinds of things, and now we're seeing some other things. Now we're seeing some changes to all of this relevant data here. So let me put in a few more, and then we'll get to exploring what all this really means. All right, so I've got just a few put in here. So we're gonna scroll down here and you'll see we've got these entered. Those are already in your table, so we don't need to mess with this. But what you're gonna see here, let's go through each of the sections. You've got your gross that you've done as a total in revenue, so 652.93. And here I've left a space for you to set a goal. So if in January you want your sales goal to be, I don't know, $3,000. You're going to be able to compare these numbers side by side. That way you can set a goal at the beginning of the month and you can see as you're getting closer. Okay, we've only got a few days left in the month, so I need, really need to, you know, up my, my game here or whatever. Same thing with your net. Once you start putting expenses, this will calculate here so you can see what your net is. Right now it obviously matches your gross because we don't have any expenses put in. Once we do, those will adjust. You've also got your rebooking information here. So your rebooking rate, again, you can set goals for each of these, total client count, return client count, new clients. So how many new clients do you wanna get this month? What kind of goal do you wanna set around return clients for your rebooking rate? Um, all of that can be set in your goals. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you've just got kind of a visual representation of your new versus return clients. Then you'll see you've got your total service hours that you've performed, total sales tax that you should have collected, total and credit card fees that you've had to pay. And then you're going to see the most popular and you can see if these are blank when you load it up, you can pick what's my most popular primary service and it's gonna be 30 minute relaxation because I got one of those. Um, what's my most popular add-on, Hotstone. I've not done many of those, but um, product. You're gonna say pain relief, eight ounce cream. And then what was the most revenue, what gave me the most revenue? And that would be my 90 minute relaxation. I've made 150 of those because I've sold one of them. Now, it's gonna calculate when you do multiples, of course, uh, but that way you can just kind of see what's your most popular and most revenue from any particular type of sale. Then you'll also see in this little chart here, you see results and you can again, change this depending on what you wanna look at, your primary services, add-ons, products, whatever. So for your primary services, I'm gonna blow this up so we can actually see it better. You can see that you've got your services broken down. You can just see this kind of a visual of what's giving you the most revenue here in comparison to the others. So if you see that, you know, three months in a row, you're looking and this one particular service isn't selling, do we need to upsell that? Do we need to adjust? Do we need to get rid of that service? You know, what's, what's the problem? Um, so this will help you kind of compare your services, compare your products, what's selling and what's not, um, sort of thing. All right. And then down here, you've got, again, this distribution of revenue. So depending on the percentages you put in that enter info here section, um, this will 
adjust. So if we've got our 5% going to savings, that means you should have 3265 transferred over to your savings account. 30% went to taxes, so that's 195.88 based on our revenue. Making sense? And then your sales type um, revenue and count for each of these. Just to give you kind of the visual, if you like this more like list of numbers, if that doesn't work for you, then you have the visual element of a chart that gives you a little bit more um, of that just kind of quick glance sort of look at it. All right. So that's the essentials of your sales section. And again, don't mess with this table. There's a whole lot going on here that you don't want to mess with. So, but this should give you all kinds of data that you can now look at. So let's jump over to our expenses section. I'm just going to scroll. Oop, there we go. And this is going to be the same kind of thing. We put in our expenses. We have a company. Our category. We're going to say this is our rent. Our amount. Let's say it's 500. Our due date is 1123. Description. You can put it in there or not. And paid from. What did we? What account did we? Pay that from. And is it paid? Yes or no. So you can go ahead and and mark in. Um, all of your expenses for the month, and then just as you pay them, you can change this. So we're gonna say, yes, we paid that. We'll hit submit, and it will do the same thing as everything else where it transfers down to this table. And then now you can see this. Um, so I'm gonna put in a couple more just to show you how this works as well. Okay, so now I've got just a couple in here, and you'll see that Okay, so now I've got a couple in here. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see. So now you've got this chart oops, of how your expenses are distributed through here. You'll also see that you have the total in expenses. What has been marked yes is your paid so far, and what has been marked no is your remaining. So this is still due for the month. And you can see that when you come down here, this is where we're adjusting. So if, again, if you want to enter in all of your bills for the month, anything that you get a bill for, and if you haven't paid it yet, you mark it no. And then once you do pay it, you mark it yes. And you will see that this will adjust accordingly. Pretty simple and straightforward, okay? Next, let's go over to the travel log for all of you mobile therapists or anybody that's doing any kind of mobile work. <clears throat> you can put in your vehicle information here if you would like. Um, that's especially important if you change vehicles midway through the year for tax purposes, you can make sure you have that logged. Now, you've got a little form each for your fuel entry, repairs and maintenance, and travel. Um, so again, you've got your form and then you've got these little tables below where everything will go. So I'm just going to input some information and let you see how this works. All right, so just a couple entries here. I've got a couple fuel entries, a brake job input here and then the one travel one trip so it's going to show me it's going to total things up here total miles traveled um total repair spend and then your total fuel spend and that way at the end of the month you can take this and you can transfer it over to your expenses as needed All right and that's pretty much the very simplistic way we try to do travel here now let's jump to our marketing plan and this is where we can set a goal for our marketing budget and then it will calculate our actual marketing budget based on that expenses um, or expense total of anything that's marked marketing. And then that will break down your acquisition cost. So how much per client and all your new clients um, did you actually pay to get each one? All right, so you've got a place to, to just kind of write out some promotions, if you've got any promotions, the name, the purpose, and the goal of that promotion. Any ads that you're going to run, so on what platform, what you're going to offer, the goal of that, the cost of it, what's your reach um, once you do start running it, the ROI, so your return on investment and money, and how many clients you got, and then that will break down your acquisition cost for that particular ad. Um, so you've got space for four of those. And then all of these over here, this whole section, these will calculate for you. So we've got different types of marketing here. You've got events, emails, social media, one, two, and three. And you can obviously change the name of these to fit what you want. 
so we'll do that here. So we've got events. We've got the name of the event. Actually, let me, let me zoom in a little bit so we can see this better. The name, the exposure, so how many clients you're going to see. So let's enter in a few things as we. All right, so you'll put in the information for that, and you put your date up here at the top. And this is how that calendar is going to view this. Okay, is if you put your date up here, the calendar is going to grab that. And now, once you do this event, you'll see how many new clients you got from it, the revenue that you received from it, your ROI and money and percent, and your client acquisition costs. So new clients, let's say I got five new clients off of that, and each of those clients spent $100, so I made $500. That means that I had $400 in positive ROI, which is a 400%, and it was $20 per client to get them in the door. Okay, And you can just do this, continue on. That way, with each event that you have, you would label this the same way. Your date and all the information relevant to that, and then the results from that event. And it's the same kind of setup for emails. So the name, the type of the email, the purpose, which list you're sending it to, and if you have a call to action like book now or read the blog or whatever it may be. And then you can track the results, opens, clicks, call to action completion, and your ROI. Networking, same kind of thing which business you're networking with, again, you put the date, who you're networking with, the contact themselves, the purpose of that networking relationship, what's the benefit to them, which is always an important thing to think about, but this is not a marketing thing, so let's get to it. Um, then your notes, how many clients you've received from them and how many clients you've sent their way. Okay, and again, you've got several spots for that. And then your social media, and you can rename these, by the way. So like if this is Facebook, type Facebook in here. Uh, if the next one you want to do Instagram or TikTok, whatever it is that you are on, you can do this here. And this is where you can plan out your post. Again, put your date up here and then the post type, the purpose, the theme, your call to action, what media you're going to use, you can put there um, or at least describe it, the text that you're going to have, any other notes on it, and then again, your results. And you do the same thing with the other two social media platforms exact same setup so if we go up here to the top when you start to input those so you'll see we've got that event it's already totaled everything out for us we have multiple events it's going to be averaging things out it's going to look at the totals it's going to calculate all of that for you so you can see it all right so that's your marketing plan one last thing we'll jump over to your calendar and you can see that on let's see what did we put that on the 23rd so that is yeah because we did today which is there we go, 23rd. You can see Girls Night Out has already transferred over here. Okay? All right. So that is the basics of your monthly sheets. Now when we go to your dashboard, again, you're going to see that all of these things have updated now to reflect everything that you've input so far. You've got your distribution of revenue, you've got your gross, your expenses, your net, total service hours, tax collected, all of this fun stuff. And then you're going to see your charts, and obviously we're down because we don't have anything for any other months. You're going to see your monthly revenue versus expenses, so our expenses are way higher than our revenue, not a good thing. Average client spend, we're looking at 125 and then your monthly rebooking rate. Okay, so we want to see this climb 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 all right now we'll get just a few more we're almost done let's go to gift cards now this we don't want to actually enter anything in directly what you're going to notice is that this will actually pull information if you click on these you'll see this big long formulas up here um that is because let's go to our january sales and i'll show you what happens when you go to enter a gift card so let's say john smith a new client and he is going to buy a gift card for a hundred dollars before I hit submit here if I jump over to gift cards which you can also navigate at the bottom by the way if you want you'll see that all of this is already here and if I hit submit it's automatically going to put all of this down here now if you forget and you don't hit you don't come here first. 
and you stay here and you hit submit and, and it's gonna clear out that section too on the gift card sheet. And that's okay because then, let me clear this out. So we'll hit submit and it's gonna clear it out. We go back to gift cards and you'll see it's gone. I put that in there already, but if you had forgotten, you could simply come in here and type the name, or excuse me, the date, the name, and the type. Let it do the rest. It's calculating all this stuff for you. The amount, the expiration, if it's in use, all of that. Let's, ex let's zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. So you've got your issue date, your purchaser, the type. Now you can type in the recipient if they let you know who it's for, that way you can keep track of it. And if you've got any kind of card number that you want to keep track of, it will calculate the amount for you based on what you've put in that um, update info section. It will calculate the expiration based on that as well. So you see I've got two years, or they've got two years to use it. And it's in use because we've not redeemed anything yet. If they have a redemption date, let's say they come in tomorrow and they redeem um, $90 of it. They've got $10 remaining. So now you see that it will calculate up here. You've got 100 issued, 90 that has been earned or has been redeemed. So that's technically earned income for you. And 10 that is unearned or unredeemed. Then you've got just how many have been sold, how many are closed, and how many are in use. So the more you add, the more this will all calculate for you. Now it's the exact same setup with your packages. All right, so your packages page is pretty much the same as gift cards. It functions almost identically. You've got these that will automatically feed in for you. You hit submit, the information will go down here. Or you can manually enter these three. And then it will do the rest for you. All right, so I put in this information and you'll see that this service count automatically pulls that information over based on the service type. Again, you have a reference number if you want to use that. Um, how much they've paid, when that expires, and then you'll see they have six remaining services, none have been redeemed, and it's considered in use. So let's say that they come in and they use one of those. You'll see that they have five remaining, still considered in use. And then the next time they come in, we'll mark that with a two, and you'll see. And what this is doing is it's um, calculating out how much has been earned, how much has been unearned, based on how many they've redeemed of that particular package. And then once you use them all, replace that with a six, you'll see this is closed. It is no longer in use. So they have zero remaining, and it's done. Make sense? All right. Now the last little section here, we'll go to your profit and loss statement. And this, you can see your annual P&L statement here. So you can see we've got a net profit of negative 40, so we're in the red here. Total revenue of 760, so it breaks it down. Again, you've got all of your sales types, classes, rent, packages, products, all that fun stuff. Plus you've got a tip line so that you can see how many you've, how much you've made in tips. And you can do this annually. You'll hit complete. Or you can do a monthly and select for January only, which is going to be the same because that's all we have in there. If I pick quarterly first, all of this will adjust. Okay, let's say I want the second quarter. It's all going to adjust to zero, right? Because I don't have anything in for the second quarter yet makes sense so you can adjust this however you would like um, that way you can see the data that you need all right and that's pretty much it um, I know it's there's a there's a lot but honestly once you get used to this it's actually fairly simple um, and it's just essentially logging in your sales you can plan your marketing you're logging in your expenses um, and that's that's kind of it and then it just it does a whole bunch of stuff for you and gets you all kinds of calculations one thing I do want to note really quick, if we go over here to this um, update info, if you increase your prices at any point in time, do not just come in here and change the fee right here. You need to come down here and you need to add it as a new service. Okay, so let's say it's um, new 30 minute relaxation or whatever, and we bump that up to $70, let's say. Whatever it is, we need to, to make this a new service 
not just change the fee here because if you change the fee here it's going to change it through the entire spreadsheet and it's going to recalculate all of that stuff and it's going to mess up all your numbers so add it as a new service if you update your pricing at any point through the year also if you plan on using this year after year which i would love if you did um you'll want to save like a master copy of this so essentially it's blank um, you could go ahead and put in all of your information here that's going to stay pretty standard and then each year you'll have it blank and ready to go so you don't need to come in and like clear out all your january sales and clear out all your february sales and, and all of it no no just save your master copy and then make a copy of that for each year and mark it with the year one other thing too um on the dashboard of the excel sheet so for those of you who are international we do have um the ability to change the currency with just a click of a button which is going to make it a lot nicer than having to go through tab by tab so if you change currency here it's going to change it throughout the entire sheet you're going to see your currency symbol has changed sorry i'm not sure what's up with the zooming effect here but you'll see that that's changed throughout if you accidentally click that you can just click change to the dollar and it will go back to the us dollar look all right now in google sheets that's a little different Instead, you will go up to File and Settings, and then you're gonna change the locale, and you can change it to whatever country you want, and it will automatically change that currency for you, and it will change the dates as well to be representative of how your, your area typically displays the date. All right, guys, I think that's it. Um, if you have any more questions, if you run into any issues or anything like that, please don't hesitate to email me, send me a message on Facebook or Instagram or wherever you're at. Um, and I'll be happy to help kind of walk you through whatever needs to be done. I hope you enjoy this as much as I have I've worked on it. <laughs> um, and I hope that this, this kind of meets all of your needs. Um, if you have any questions, again, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. And I look forward to hearing from y'all. Thanks, guys.